Hello and welcome to a new series in Hearts of Iron 3. I am Robot Genie. And uh, yeah, so what we're running here is we got Hearts of Iron 3, um, the historical plausibility mod. Uh, we got all of the um, expansion packs for Hearts of Iron 3, and this is the one that runs on, I think it's the finest hour. Anyway, there, there's some cool changes in here, like um, Siam is Thailand, uh, Indochina. Uh, if you know the base game, this is actually normally France, and it is still French. It's a colony of France. And uh, same with India, it would be a colony of um, the UK, and Malaya, also a colony of the UK. Which is great, because what this does is, um, if you played through the base game a little bit, you know that uh, sometimes, uh, uh, and read that as most of the time, um, Britain will not actually man India. So if you're like Japan or the Republic of China, you can just kind of like walk into India and basically take it all over during the war. And uh, in this way, India will build and use its own troops as a proxy of the United Kingdom. So <laughs> there will actually be a fighting force here. Um, and then Great Britain can also send uh, troops over there. So I'd imagine, I haven't played this yet, but I would imagine that reduces the overall troops the United Kingdom can build but more evenly balances them out throughout their empire. Uh, we can also see that like Syria exists, uh, Palestine exists, and also some countries have been uh, a little bit rebalanced. Like specifically, I've been checking, I've been going in and checking out the initial stats of some countries, like the Spanish Republic here. Uh, more leadership than it had before, which which is great because it had the leadership of like I don't know, like of a minor before and it was it was a little bit absurd in the base game i feel like <laughs> if you don't play one of the top countries or italy uh you can't really do any research uh whereas the, i think this balances things out a little bit more where um some people that should be in pretty influential under player control like the spanish republic uh has more power here uh china's actually been reduced in leadership power which i think is uh is a good idea because if you play the uh, Republic of China in the normal game you, you can get like Germany's research power pretty quick uh, yeah so so some people have been improved I believe Brazil has been improved uh, they're a little bit better so they should be um, a little bit uh, more fun to play and I think it just o it just opens up a lot of more options for countries to play in my opinion I, I didn't check Portugal but the one that I really want to play here is Canada so that's what we're gonna do we're going to play Canada, and uh, they got a big boost from the base game. I don't know what their leadership is in the base game, but I already checked them out. They got 12. They got 12 here, which is, you know, it's not, it's definitely not a, um, we're, we're going to do whatever we want type of deal, but it is a, uh, you know, we can focus on a, a few, a few things. And, you know, they got a, they got a respectable industrial capacity here of 36, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think, like, Canada is a good, reasonable choice to play. And, um, we're going to go with that. I mean, they had a pretty big impact in World War II. Now, we, we, will, we will operate things a little bit differently. Like, uh, you know, Canada, for instance, in World War II did not take the, uh, take the chance to really expand their, their influence and create, you know, like, probably, probably Canada really should have taken over, you know, parts of South America here to create an empire for themselves. So that's that's kind of what we're going to do. And then and then we'll join on the ally side and see how we can affect the war. Now, for a second I was kind of thinking about being a communist Canada, but nah, I don't know. That isn't I'm going to be communist, I'd rather be like Brazil. <laughs> Cuz uh to be quite honest, uh no matter how well we do here, um, if the communists go to war with the allies, the United States' allies, uh, yeah, Canada is not defensible against the United States. Whereas maybe Mexico is, or, or certainly Brazil has maybe a little bit better chance. And Canada has just like this huge border, and uh, there's no chance. <laughs> no chance. Uh, so we're not going to do that. We're, we're going to go, um, <laughs> we're not going to make uh, Canada communists. Um hold early elections holy crap that's a lot of uh that's a lot of stuff so i haven't even played a game in this yet so i'm gonna be kind of confused here for a little bit oh we can uh we can enact the event introduction 
So, uh, what's this? Um, okay. Uh, let's skip to the nation specific part. Alright. Historical background of Canada. Canada saw a quick rise, economic rise through the Transcontinental Railroad completed in 1885, shipping industry and settling in the West. The, domain, the Dominion supported Great Britain during the Boer War and the World War I, underlying its semi-independent status by signing the Versailles Treaty for themselves in 1919, and by receiving its own seat in the League of Nations. From Liberals' demand for Canada, the conduct of independent foreign policy on the Empire Con Conference 1923, Okay, whatever. Fascinating. Yes. Okay. Whatever. I, uh... Yeah. Well, well, whatever. I don't care. So, yeah, I guess we can't lower our neutrality. Just... Our neutrality is 90%. Um, okay. So I think one of the first things that we want to do is let's, um, let's send our spies against the United States. Increase the threat of the United States. And um, we're not going to do this because we want to attack the United States. The reason we're going to do this is uh, so we can go to war with um, other people. Uh, okay, I guess majors. I mean, yeah. No, it's United States. They're, uh, uh, we're going to raise national unity. Wow, our national unity is really high, so I guess we'll also do ruling party support. Why not? Um, yeah, we're, we're afraid of those Americans over there with all their uh, TV and craziness. Canada doesn't want to deal with any of that. Now, what should we research here? Well, uh, I feel like Arctic, being in Canada, I feel like Arctic warfare is a uh, good idea. We want combat radios, definitely. Oh, it looks like there's multiple levels of combat radios now. Uh, there was only one in the base game, so that's interesting. Um, I don't think we need any of these refining techniques. Supply production might be nice. Agriculture for more manpower, definitely. Canada does not have a lot of manpower. Um, census tabulation machine yeah we want some more research uh, I think some of these construction uh, ideas is probably the best way to go great war experience that sounds like a Victoria 2 technology okay it looks like these are cascading the operational and land stuff looks like they're cascading areas now rather than I can just research whatever I want okay well we're probably not gonna be doing tank crews but we will be doing infantry um, Canada uh, I'm pretty sure that Canada has a really good uh, infantry and specialist uh, unit in like in real life and uh, so I'm going to focus on that. We're going to focus on infantry, specialists, and maybe, maybe like uh, some airplane technology. Uh, I plan to buy my ships from Great Britain. We'll, br we'll buy some production licenses. Um, I mean, I guess I could focus a little bit on the Navy. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. The The most important is going to be the specialist infantry and the, uh, so we want like marines, uh, we want paratroopers, um, and then we want regular infantry backed up by artillery. Right, I think uh, artillery guns for sure. Now I also think that um, in the base game you you can do uh, anti-tank groups, anti-aircraft, and artillery. I think in this game they're in this uh, in this mod they're all um, they're all grouped together under one support unit. Pretty sure. Okay, we get armored cars. Yeah, uh, there's. Maybe I'll just make this as like an episode zero because this is going to be a lot of um, 
looking at stuff this game, kind of setting up everything. And yeah, we want to make sure that all of our all of our uh, infantry stuff is uh, up to date. I don't know what an assault bed is. I think that's the engineering brigade from normal from normal group. We probably want anti tank development too. Um, we are going to be fighting Germany, and uh, if I know anything about Germany, they certainly had tanks. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's let's go with three for espionage until until we have some extra spies. We should probably also spy on. Um, non-aggression pack with the United States. Oh, yeah, we don't want to get to war with the United States. We can't attack anybody that is kind of like... Wait, are they all? I... Uh, maybe this is a change with this game that they are all maybe... Uh... What is a non-aggression? Promise not to declare war on them. So, but does that... I mean, normally they're under the protection of the United States. Uh, is that the same thing? Like, if I declare war on these guys, will the United States come to kick the crap out of me? Because you know that that could be uh, that could be really bad. You know what? What we're gonna do is um, we're going to. I guess we'll do Venezuela first. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I what I want to do is we'll we'll start an episode, or um, I'll save before declaring war on. And if if the non-aggression pack doesn't like, since I don't know what it means, we'll we'll just try it out. And uh, if, if it works that the U.S. is going to attack us over it, we're just going to not invade any of these countries and just go solo. If, it, if that's not how this non-aggression pact works, then we're going to invade. Uh, so I'm not really sure how it works. And um, when, that, when the time comes for that, we'll, we'll just, um, yeah, we'll just kind of play it like that, uh, especially since this is my first playthrough. Now, I want to do a round of IC production to start. Uh, we definitely have some time here on the start, and uh, I want to get some IC out. We don't really need reinforcements, upgrades, no. All this is going to change right after the game starts. It like starts recalculating right away. Kind of annoying. Um, oh wow, we're going to really need some more convoys. A lot more convoys because the thing is all of our allies that we're going to trade with are like across the ocean except for the united states so uh we're going to need a lot of convoys and we're going to need them not to get blown up uh perhaps we should research destroyers to protect them uh that might not be a bad idea uh what we're what, we're, what are we going to do are we already part of uh the allies hmm that's interesting uh, so Australia is, but Canada is not. The other thing is, by increasing the threat of the United States and us getting paranoid about that, uh, that will also allow us to join um, the Allies earlier. And once we're on the Allies, we can we can request like land leases and and get better trade agreements, and uh, you know it, it's good for us. Uh, so yeah, let's um, we'll do a lot of officer training until uh, until we're at like 140, and then we'll change it around. So right now we're starting with pretty low research or pretty low leadership points in research, but that's fine. Um, we're it, it's gonna it's gonna get better. And at this point, I think we're probably good on uh on uh just kind of unpausing it here let me just check a few more things we got oh wow we can replace them so threat resistance drift towards allies from influence yeah we'll keep that guy uh, this guy gives plus ic production 
Uh, wow, Edu education system delay. Uh, wow, they all have <laughs> educational system decay. Uh, yeah, apparently Canada's advisors don't really like their education system, so that appears to be the best guy. Uh, we want the leadership modifier guy rather than counter espionage. Um, <laughs> to be quite honest, if anybody's really doing espionage against us, they're uh, they're wasting their points because um, you know should do it against Great Britain or the United States or something. We're not, we're powerful, but we're not, <laughs> we're not somebody, uh, we're not that powerful. That's something you should be stealing tech from. Uh, let's see. I, oh, hmm. So these guys support different doctrines. And that's Grand Battle Plan. That's superior fire power. We are probably almost definitely going to be going with Human Wave Doctrine, and then, um, yeah, because the, these support infantry, and the, these are for like um, tanks and and mixed combined armored groups. This is f just for, it looks like, a mix of everything, which will probably be good for us as well. We're going to go for Human Wave Doctrine and all this stuff. Oh, I like how um, you a lot of these affect infantry and militia. I didn't like in the base game where you basically had to choose whether you wanted to do infantry or militia, because that meant you never focused on militia. <laughs> so I, I like that. Uh, so we want Human Wave doctrine so if we go over to the politics guy now where were we we were we're here so yeah this national manpower modifier and then human wave doctrine sounds great was that the party that he supports yeah I think so so what are these guys these guys are all supporting the liberal party market liberals crazy Canadian liberals uh, I think the supply consumption guy is fine Chief of the Navy. Um, hmm. I um. I don't know. I guess the guy that's there is fine. And then the Air Force. I guess this guy's fine. I mean, we're me not focusing a lot on the Navy and the Air Force, so. Is what it is. Anyway, yeah, this this will be the end of the first episode. So in the next episode, we're we're gonna unpause, like do some do some uh, do some game stuff and everything. Uh, but yeah, if you're liking the series, make sure to like and or subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Later.